I'm Drew McMillan, and welcome to Powerboat Television. Now, this week, I'm setting off on my first big feature trip for the show, so I want everything to go absolutely perfect. Of course, diehard fans of the show will no doubt remember me from my cameo back in our 2012 season. Check out that stash. But now, I'm wearing the big boy pants. I got a new shirt, fast shades, and most importantly, Yamaha hooked me up with a fully loaded AR-195 sport boat and sent me out for some riverboat cruising on the Grand River. Starting out as barely a trickle near the town of Dundalk, the Grand River winds for almost 300 kilometers or 180 miles before it flows into Lake Erie at Port Maitland. Bellwood's the first boatable section on the river, so it's the first stop on my Grand River tour. Loaded up in a beauty F-150 Limited from Ford, I headed to the Bellwood Lake Conservation Area to splash the boat. Maybe not such a hidden gem to the locals, the Grand is an awesome boating destination just outside the big city that might get overlooked next to the Great Lakes and Muskoka. Some parts are way too shallow, even for our jet drive, but Bellwood Lake, just north of Guelph, is a great spot to see if we can put the sport in sport boat. I met up with my friend Andrew. He's been boating and fishing these waters all his life, and he knows the lake as well as anyone. The transom of our sport boat was the perfect spot to cast the line. And what's fishing on Bellwood Lake like? Uh, the fishing's been pretty good lately for walleye. So that's more normal when we come out here to target, and bass fishing's really good too. And the cool part about the Grand River here is we got brown trout fishing starting right below the Shan Dam. Pretty unique to this part of the river. And we get guys coming from all over the world to fish for the browns here. You're kidding. Yeah, that's the, the big drawing point of this area. How often do you come back empty handed? Uh, not often. You get the odd night where you come up short, but if you put enough time out here, you're bound to find something. You're bound to have something to take a bite? Yep. Are you kidding? Lost another one? Yeah. So what's the deal with the pike that they... they uh... They're just really toothy. Oh, OK. Could be a worse day to be out here, though, I guess. Oh, for sure. Oh, that's a pretty good-sized guy. Yeah. He came up on the last cast, too. There you go. You said you never come empty-handed, right? Yep, not often. Nice little bass. Atta boy. Get that guy back. All right, Andrew, well, I appreciate you bringing us out here. Yeah, thanks for Couple having spots. me. spots. You had a little more luck than I did. Yeah, we got one little bass and snapped off by a couple pikes, so it's not bad for a short time. And I almost caught a dinghy. There so you go. Perfect. Exactly. Anyway, thanks for having much me. Much obliged. Now that we're back at the dock, we're ready to take a look at all the features in this new 2019 AR195 from Yamaha. For starters, there's a portside bench instead of a second captain's chair, which is nice as it creates an open concept layout. This brand new deck design was also built with space in mind, specifically taking out the chair behind this rotating captain seat, which opens up some J-shaped seating and leaves room for a table and cooler, both of which come standard with the boat. Also standard are the forward sweeping tower with integrated bimini top, snap-in marine carpet. In terms of storage, this boat has plenty, 1,598 liters to be exact including an in-floor wet storage locker, ideal for skis, port side storage, glove box, and starboard side storage, complete with a garbage can. At the helm, there's a Clarion Marine radio with USB and auxiliary inputs, 12-volt accessory port, an LCD gauge cluster, articulating cell phone holder, and control of the no-wake mode and cruise assist. One of the biggest changes with the AR195 for 2019 is that Yamaha has made it three inches longer and two inches wider, which may not seem like a lot, but it really does add a lot of space, especially up here in the bow where they've carried the beam almost all the way forward, making it nice and roomy for all your friends up front. Powering the AR195 is the tried, tested, and true 1.8 liter SVHO engine. Because of the internal propulsion jet drive system, there's no bulky engine hatch, and Yamaha took that space and put it into this awesome swim platform, which is two-tiered, which is great for, you know, putting on a wakeboard or just lounging in the sun if you're swimming, which is also made easier with a swim ladder hidden in the transom. I figured this calm water was too good to squander. And plus, what good is having a boat like this if you've got no one to share it with on a day like today? So I called in a first mate, one of my best friends, Ryan. 
Hey, what's up, buddy? Dude, I have a sweet boat from Yamaha. It is a gorgeous day out here on Bellwood Lake. Can you make it out? I can do that. Can you get here in an hour? I can do that. Can you bring your skis? I can do that. Hey, cameraman, you can spot, right? All right, I'll see you when you get here. All right, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bellwood is a reservoir on the Grand River formed by the Shan Dam in 1942. It's 12 kilometers long and just two kilometers across at its widest point. So that means that even on the windiest days, there's always a calm shore for skiing. Today, wind wasn't even a thought to us, so we made sure to take full advantage. And I was excited to see how the AR-195 would perform with the skier in tow. All right, you ready? Born ready. Uh, how about you give me your shades? That's a good idea. Yeah, I'll trade you. Jet drive felt like an inboard pulling him out of the water. And even as he's cutting back and forth, it still feels rock solid, like I'm going in a straight path, not getting yanked around by the skier at all. Well, at least the boat was solid. Hey! much air I got? I had like 50 feet. So a little bit of trouble getting up on one, but yeah. other than that, how'd it feel? It felt good. I think we'll get that one next time. The lake here is beautiful. Boat felt great in it. Overall, just a solid day. After a great day on Bellwood Lake, we loaded up our F-150, pulled out, and headed south towards the town of Cayuga. Later in the show, we check out more of this incredible river. The Grand River gets pretty shallow and quick at points, which makes it a great place for a float or a paddle, but not accessible by most powerboats. We were told, though, that the stretches south of Brantford are some of the best boating around, and we'd hate to squander our time with this AR-195. So we headed down to splash the boat in Cayuga to continue my first trip with Powerboat TV. If you ask me, it's tough to beat a Yamaha sport boat as a riverboat cruiser. The jet drive lets you access shallower water, there's plenty of storage space to bring all the gear you need, and they're super fuel efficient. We got about three miles per gallon on our trip, and we did the whole thing on less than a full tank. The run from Cayuga to Dunville is about 15 miles, or 25 kilometers. Nothing for our sport boat, which cruises best around 30 miles per hour. We actually had to remember to slow down at points to soak in the unique scenery. Along the way, we stopped in to say hi to Dan McKay, a longtime Dunville boater and a real ambassador for the river. Dan, thanks a lot for uh, coming out here, being yeah, our de facto to, river guide here. Glad to have you. I'm always happy to brag about the Grand River. There is a lot to brag about. So can you tell me, why do you live here? I haven't really seen any place that can compare to this. Most rivers are really shallow and not conducive for power boating. Where this one, because there's a dam in Dunville, it brings the water level up so you can do boating. William Merritt came over here and built the Welland Canal to bring boats from Lake Ontario to Lake Erie and then access the upper Great Lakes. Um, he didn't have enough water to run the lock, so he built a dam in Dunville to give him enough headwater. And they built a canal from Dunville to Welland to feed that water. Along came one of his compatriots, Colonel Thompson, who built the Grand River Navigation Company. And he basically built a whole series of canals and locks all the way up the river through Cambridge and Kitchener. And remember, this was before trains and roads. They pulled horse-drawn barges upriver and floated them back down with produce on them. And it really settled the whole interior of Ontario. It's one of the world's best trout fisheries in the north end in the cold water fishery up in the Dundalk area. We were up da there at uh, Bellwood Lake. Yeah, yes, right? and down here it's a warm water fishery. So it's the most diverse fishery in all of Canada and just about every species of freshwater fish are in this river system. You mentioned a particular stretch that you thought is the best boating on the river. That's if you boat. love water skiing and water sports, the best spot is this area between Cuga and Dunville. It's uh, calm, there's lots of water, there's like 15 feet of water in the middle. 
There's bends and turns in the river, so even on a windy day, you can always find a spot where it's calm. And Dan would know. He's one of the earliest members of the Dunville Water Ski Club back in the 1970s, and he's been skiing here ever since. As an avid water skier myself, though, I wasn't just going to take his word for it. Plus, I wanted to see what it was like to go for a rip on the AR-195. The wake had a bit of a bump at slalom speed, but overall, I was pretty impressed with how stable it was from the skier's perspective. Solid enough that I got my confidence up to try something I haven't done in a couple of years. And then I guess I got a little too confident. And that, Ryan, is both how it's done and not done. Let's go. OK. After the free face wash, we continued on our way to Dunville, where we hit a bit of an obstacle, the Dunville Dam. So we zipped back up to Cayuga, pulled the boat out, and trailered it down to the Dunville Boat Club. It's a small club right in the middle of town with a ramp where anyone can launch for a small fee. The run from Dunville to Lake Erie is just five nautical miles, but it had to have been my favorite stretch of our trip. The bottom of the Grand winds around the Bing Island Conservation Area, past windmills and wetlands before it spits out into the Great Lake at Port Maitland. From here, you could go east to Port Colburn or west to Long Point, but this was good enough for us. We had reached open water and we got the selfie to prove it. And with the day coming to an end, we had just enough time to soak in a Lake Erie sunset on the spit. Well, appreciate you coming out and helping me nail my very first Powerboat TV segment. I appreciate you taking me out of the office and getting me away from work. You know what? For that, you're welcome. <laughs> Only one thing left to do now, my man. What's that? You know it. <laughs>